Thank you. Um, my name is Debbie Langto, Vera Health Plans Health and Wellness Champion. And thank you for giving me your time today to what we're going to talk about is some time management tips and skills and what I call take charge of your time. Um, how many of us feel like we're kind of scatterbrained or running here and there <laughs> day to day? I bet everybody's hand can go up in this room. And um, there's probably different devices or tools that you use to try to manage time in your life. So I'm going to go over some that I personally use and some that, um, that are out there that maybe you use as well. So picking a time management tool, how many of you guys use some sort of calendar, smartphone, your Outlook? How many of you guys use that? Most everybody. So pick one that's going to work for you. Um, I have a couple different ones that I use. Of course, I use my Outlook here at work to put all my work um, task on there, meetings, um, where I'm going. And then I kind of go old school. I use a paper. Um, you can go to your Midwest Bank and get one. <laughs> um, but this is just like my personal stuff as far as appointments. Um, when I work for the park and rec, I throw when I work in there. So that's just kind of my personal one there. So I kind of keep my work separate from a personal one. Um, if you have kids and you know how busy kids can be, um, sometimes it's maybe easier to do one calendar where you have all the activities. If you have maybe one of the bigger 30-day calendars where you can put activities, school functions, what they might need for school. Um, sometimes that's easier too, but pick what's going to work best for you. Um, some people might use their smartphone. Um, I find it's just easier for me to write down rather than typing everything in with that. And I don't know how to create an event on there, so um, I'm real basic with it. But pick what's going to work best for you and what's going to help you stay organized. So there's a lot of devices and tools out there. Um, try to capture all tasks as well as um, maybe a year-long calendar. I just take mine kind of month to month or sometimes week to week because things change, so you got to be a little bit flexible with it. So some people prefer one calendar. Um, for me, I use a couple different ones. Um, to try to kind of separate stuff with that. So pick what's going to work best for you. If you're not using one, try to maybe start using one. It will certainly help you be organized and less stressed. Um, one calendar, one life. This might work for, for some people, um, especially with, with kids. Um, one calendar is easy because if you have multiple kids, you might have multiple events where it's easier to just look on one calendar and say, okay, I've got school conferences here today. Um, I've got play practice for, for this kid here. Um, I work here, doctor's appointment. So one calendar might be easier if you feel like you're kind of all over the place of looking at multiple calendars in multiple places. So, but again, pick which is going to be best for you. If it's the smartphone, computer, paper calendar. Um, now kind of talking about getting to the bottom of the basket. Um, limit your in-basket to current task. I kind of look at this as your email inbox. How many of you dread coming after a weekend and opening that up <laughs> Monday morning and <laughs> you see all your, your tasks in there? So um, try to clean that out, taking a few minutes before maybe going off to a meeting or taking some calls with that. Try to do your daily tasks to try to clean out some of those. Um, trash what you don't need, so get rid of the junk that you don't need in there. And um, complete tasks that don't take more than a minute. So if you know that, hey, that's just a quick response or a quick phone call, try to get that out of the way because that's just one less thing to, to worry about that day. So um, try to tackle those shortened tasks with that. Um, don't let tasks linger too long. Um, procrastination, that can certainly creep up on you and then all of a sudden that deadline is here. So try to stay on top of task and um, don't let them creep up on you. To daily to-do list. How many of you guys make a to-do list on a daily basis? All right. I try to do this. It certainly helped me out. Um, I, you know, I try to, even at the last few minutes of my day, try to see, okay, what didn't I get done today? What do I need to do tomorrow? What can I move over? What do I need to do today? And I just write it down and then kind of match it up with my outlook with it. And, you know, even kind of personally too, what's going on today? 
Or I used to not make a grocery list and you walk in the grocery store and all of a sudden you just lose your brain because <laughs> you don't know what you're there for. I was in Costco and I think almost bought a paddleboard the other day and I was going in there for Frosted Flakes. So, um, so having that list is certainly going to help you stay organized. It's also going to save you money and time in the long run you know, for the grocery store. But daily to-do lists, you just cross them off. You're not going to forget anything to do that, um, especially with the kids, get them involved. Hey, what's going on today? Um, what do we have going on tonight? So, you know, communication is key, especially if you have multiple things going on. Um, be flexible. Don't let it be etched in stone. We know that life changes, days change. You might come into the meeting and have something planned. You know, I'm going to go do my workout over the lunch hour or I'm going to take some time to myself for the lunch hour. You get a meeting scheduled. Be flexible with that. Or the kids' school got called off. I got to go get the kids here. So be flexible and say, okay, I didn't get this done here. Where in my day can I fit that into? Can I shuffle some stuff around in the afternoon or the evening? So you just got to go back, kind of refocus, reorganize. Um, look at your to-do list. What can maybe I move over to tomorrow with that? So um, use a weekly review to clarify your priorities. So um, maybe looking at next week. What do I have going on next week? Do I have some big meetings, big projects coming up? What do I need to do to complete those tasks? And um, do I need to reach out to someone, work with some resources with it? So take a look kind of the week ahead um, or month ahead, kind of whatever works for you, and just see what do I need to do. That way it's not going to creep up on you and you're going to find yourself stressed um, trying to complete that. Um, pick a day and time to process all the stuff in your inbox. So maybe Friday afternoons are a little bit lighter for you. It can take some time to clean out your inbox, maybe kind of update your calendar if you need to do that, and you know what's going on during the weekend, um, kids' activities, busy activities with it. So take some time during the week to give that time to um, organize, prioritize, get stuff on your calendar. Declutter. Um, this one is huge. Um, whether it's your workspace or at home, you want to try to declutter that space because how many of you have that closet or that junk drawer in your home, you open it up and you just cringe So because it's stressing you out. But if you've cleaned it out, how much better you feel. My garage was like that. I moved a few months ago and it stayed like that and then I finally cleaned it out. And I can't tell you how much I, I love just going out there. So <laughs> just spending time in the garage. <laughs> um, but you know, even your workspace. Um, can be kind of stressful if you have a lot of clutter around there and you're kind of searching for stuff or losing stuff with it. Just um, taking that time to say, okay, um, putting stuff in the appropriate spot, getting rid of stuff that maybe you don't need is going to help you. I mean, your workspace, we spend a majority of our time at work. Um, decluttering your workspace, making it more organized, function efficient is going to help you quality of work, and also you're not going to feel stressed with that too. Um, so try to find pleasing ways to store your clutter both in at home at work. Just get rid of stuff you don't need. Um, you know, if you don't need it, get rid of it. Might be hard, but <laughs> um, it's going to help you in the long run and it's not just going to build up that clutter. Wrapping up your work day. Um, dedicate the last 10 minutes of your work day, not the last hour, of your work day, but just 10 minutes. Um, just clearing off your desk and reviewing for the next day. Um, I find this helpful, especially if I know that, okay, we have to be traveling the next day. Do we have to leave early in the morning? Do I have everything I need? And just helps me kind of be prepared for when I'm going in to meet with that client or if I have a meeting. Um, so just take the last 10 minutes, just review what's going on, declutter your area. Um, 10 minutes. It's not a long time to do, so just take that last few minutes and it's going to help you come in. You're going to be able to not be stressed out maybe during the evening and you're going to come in and get the day running. Take charge of your homework. Um, designate an area of your home that's your, your own workspace with it. Um, you know, especially kids. Kids are always bringing homework. Um, don't let them do it in the kitchen with the TV on because they're not going to get their homework done and they're just going to stare at the TV and it's going to take longer. So 
even for yourself, if you're bringing your work home, designate an area where you can just sit down, focus on that, um, your quality of work, you're not gonna have to spend as much time on that. So just designate an area of your house that's just kind of your home workspace or your kids workspace for homework is a big deal too. Um, the rest of the house is a work-free zone. So if it's your living room, kitchen, no work needs to be done in here. This is our area to let our hair down. Um, living well, um, taking charge of your health and will also be a part of taking charge of your time. Follow a healthy diet. We all know if we eat pretty well, we're gonna feel pretty well, we're gonna have more energy, we're gonna be more focused, we're gonna be able to manage that time a little bit better. Making time for exercise. This is the biggest excuse why people don't do exercise, lack of time. Um, but we can all find time in our, in our day to do that. Whether it's 10 minutes during your lunch hour, you guys are giving me almost a half an hour of your time today. So just take 10 minutes, do a little walking when the weather permits it, or just getting up and moving throughout the day too. I know we've talked about the sitting disease before. We just sit too much, so trying to move every hour for a few minutes. Um, get enough sleep. That's a huge thing too. If you find that you're not getting enough sleep at night, you get home, you're up till maybe 10, 11 o'clock at night because you're doing stuff so much during the day or getting the kids' stuff ready, your stuff ready. Try to see maybe where you can reorganize some stuff that you're getting to bed a little bit earlier. Um, they recommend at least seven hours of sleep a night. So try to get um, anywhere from six to seven is probably adequate. Um, so to kind of sum it all up, time can be managed. Um, I think over time since we were kids, we've, especially when we became adults and got jobs, we've had to manage our time. We know where we have to be, what time. So find what tool is going to work for you, what tips are going to work for you, and just take a little bit of that time to manage your time. So you can take 10 minutes, just kind of review your day, review your next day. That's really helped me to try to stay on top of stuff. And it's also, you know, provides quality service to when we're working with our employer groups, our members. Um, but it also kind of has a nice work-life balance too. Then maybe you're not having to take your work home and taking time away from the families. How many of you guys use your smartphones in here? Quite a few people. So how many of you guys are old school? <laughs> Margaret and, and Jody. So um, if you, how many of you guys use like one big calendar for like kids activities and stuff outside of work? So. So you, you just got to figure out kind of what works best for you and, yeah, trial and error with it. So maybe one of these days I'll go to my smartphone and get rid of my paper one here. So Make time for yourself is kind of the big thing, too, because we know if things kind of spiral out of control, you get stressed, and then that's when our diet isn't that great. We're not getting our exercise. So just even some of that time to focus and organize and um, it list really help to just see, okay, visually what's going on. You might know kind of up here, but I'm a visual person where I just need to write it down of going to the grocery store, need to work this weekend, um, even kind of a to-do list or like what I do on my outlook, I'll print off my weekly stuff and just kind of make notes of what I need to bring to that employer group with me. What do I, um, is, am I going with Tara? Am I going alone? So just those little things, um, and they don't take a lot of time to do. So. so if you're not using a time management tool, I encourage you to um, even making a list, just starting there. It's, it's certainly going to help you if you kind of feel like um, things are out of balance. I always kind of say, you know, the wellness wheel where there's the different dimensions on there. And if one's thrown out, if you're stressed, it's gonna kind of throw everything else out as far as not taking care of yourself as much. Um, maybe you're not having the social piece, piece of it that I'm too busy to go see my friends and family. So it kind of throws everything out of whack. Um, but just kind of sitting down, reorganizing, refocusing is gonna help you. Any other questions? Right. This is gonna be the most organized group ever, so. <laughs> Everybody's going to be time on task. And 
do the mats. <laughs>